What are the best great buildings? I get asked this question a lot. Let's settle this today with my great building tier list for Forge of Empires for 2024. Here's how it works. I've got all the great buildings currently in the game right here, and I'm going to be placing them into tiers. S tier is the best with the greatest great buildings. D is the worst where I would avoid ever building these ones. I've also added a situational rank where I'll put great buildings that can be good, but most players should probably avoid them. We're going to be going in order of the great buildings by age, starting with the no age great buildings. First up is the observatory. It provides guild goods and support pool in a pretty decent size of only 3x3. Three three. This one goes in the A tier. With the guild battlegrounds update, guild goods are more important than ever, and this is by far the most efficient great building for guild goods. Next is the Temple of Relics. This one is interesting. It ranks terribly in terms of the resources it provides. Almost always the worst in forge points and goods, but it has two redeeming qualities. First, it is the best great building for generating trade coins and gems for the antique stealer, which can be used to help level your castle system faster to get those three expansions at the higher levels, and the Temple of Relics is also the best provider of Fountains of Youth, giving 43 on average every year at level 100. If you're working on getting a diamond farm up and running, I recommend placing this building down. Otherwise, I'd probably stay away from it. Therefore, the Temple of Relics is going in situational. Our last no-age great building is the Oracle of Delphi. It provides supplies and happiness and immediately is our first great building in the D tier. Moving on to the Bronze Age, we have the Tower of Babel. It provides population and unrefined goods and can go live right next to the Oracle in D tier. The good news is that the other Bronze Age great building, the Statue of Zeus, isn't nearly as bad. This one is only 2x3 and provides attack boosts. Thanks to its small size and great efficiency, it's going into the A tier. Now, in the Iron Age, we have both the Lighthouse of Alexandria and the Colosseum. The Lighthouse provides unrefined goods and a supply boost, and the Colosseum provides metals and happiness. All of these boosts are necessary for a healthy city, so they get to go into the S tier. Just kidding, these are both low D. In the early Middle Ages, you can get the Hagia Sophia, which is 6x7 and provides happiness and forge points. However, its efficiency is so bad that it takes until level 70 to hit one forge point per tile. This goes straight to the high D tier. As for the Cathedral of Aachen though, I think it deserves a higher rank. This 4x6 building gives us attack boosts and coins and is decent for them. Due to the Cathedral's large size, I can't give it as high of a ranking as the Statue of Zeus, but for me, it's still definitely A tier. Future events may begin power creeping the cathedral soon, but until we can fill our cities with ultra-powerful event buildings like the Gold League buildings, I think it's still worth placing. The early Middle Ages also have a third great building, the Galata Tower. It provides a chance at plunder protection and unrefined goods. It can be pretty efficient for those goods, but as they are unrefined, it won't be that useful past the modern era. Not to mention, the plunder protection isn't something that should matter, as you should be trying to collect your city when your productions have just completed, avoiding any chance of being plundered regardless. As such, I'm putting the Galata Tower in the C tier. Some players might find it useful, but most won't. Moving on to the High Middle Ages, the St. Mark's Basilica is 6x6, provides a coin boost and unrefined goods, and is a waste of space. Just use coin boost items, or build event buildings with coin production if you really need more coins. As per goods, you'll have to reach over level 60 to get the same goods per tile efficiency as a sleigh builder, so the basilica is going to D tier. Notre Dame. What do I even say about this one? Supplies and happiness, basically a bigger, more expensive oracle. Friends don't let friends build it, and it takes its rightful place in the D tier. We've got a lot of great buildings in the lower tiers. Maybe the late middle ages will help? First up is the St. Basil's Cathedral and things already aren't looking good for it. It provides defense boosts, coins, and support pool. However, as guild versus guild is passing on, that means nothing. The defense boosts are decent, I suppose. However, it's currently not worth investing in. A lot of the modern event buildings we have are more than able to support the defense needed for guild expeditions level five, and beyond that, there's not much of a use for defense. The St. Basil's can take D tier. The second great building of the late Middle Ages is the third of the attack trinity. The Castel del Monte is 5x5 and provides both attack boosts and forge points. 
making it an easy choice for anyone wanting to build up either of those bonuses. It is slightly less efficient than the Cathedral of Aachen, but the return on investment is better due to the forge points it provides. I'm putting the Castell in A tier above the Cathedral. In the Colonial Age, we have the Deal Castle with defense boosts, support pool, and medals, and a massive 7x7 size, and the Frauenkirche of Dresden, a 5x5 building giving us happiness and unrefined goods. Both of these are ones you should not build, they're just too inefficient for what they provide, so both of them just go to the D tier. The Industrial Age brings us the Capital, a massive great building providing population and supplies. This one is easily forgettable, as population isn't something most players need, and if you do, I would just recommend event buildings instead of a great building. Don't bother with it, D tier. We also have the Royal Albert Hall, another huge great building giving a supply boost in unrefined goods. It's basically a chonky lighthouse of Alexandria. It's terribly inefficient, so D tier. If you really need supplies, there will be better options that we'll discuss later. Moving on to the Progressive Era, things are about to get spicy. This era has two of the most popular great buildings, the Chateau Frontenac and Alcatraz. The Chateau is 5x6 and provides coins and a boost to quest rewards. This can include boosts to diamonds. The big benefit of the Chateau is if you're using it to loop recurring quests and completing ones such as the Unbirthday quest over and over daily to get tons of goods. For those who use it like that and reach the limit of 2,000 aborted quests per day, this great building is incredibly powerful. However, what I've noticed is that most players with this great building will never be looping through all of those quests to actually get the benefit. For quite a few players, this great building just sits there, only used when aging up to generate extra diamonds from the new recurring quests. As such, I'm putting the Chateau in Situational. If you will be looping quests daily, by all means, build it. But if you're not going to put in the amount of time every single day required for looping quests, I'd save yourself the space and build something else instead. As for the Alcatraz, it's currently the only great building that produces unattached units and a decent amount of happiness too. It only produces units per the barracks that you have in your city, so you can control which ones you get. As such, many players find the Alcatraz a must-have in your city if you plan on fighting. I'm not so sure. Event buildings are starting to get much closer to the efficiency of even a high-level Alcatraz. The Pirate Marauders from the 2023 Summer Event give one artillery unit per tile the efficiency of a level 72 Alcatraz. The Cider Garden from the Fall Event gives us an average of 0.75 light units per tile, including Next Age units, or Rogues if you're in Space Age Titan, and the Raccoon Hideout from the 2024 Wildlife Event gives one Rogue in two tiles. Of course, none of these buildings are as good per tile as a high-level Alcatraz, and only give specific units, but they also give plenty of other bonuses as well, such as attack boosts, goods, and forge points. Especially with the removal of Guild vs. Guild, I just don't think that the Traz is an S-tier building anymore. Sure, you'll go through plenty of units in Guild Battlegrounds, but it's important to remember the difference between your attrition limit and where you're killing your entire army in fights. I think most players should still be building an Alcatraz, but I'm beginning to lean towards just building some of these event buildings that give units and other rewards too. They're easier to fit in your city and are more broadly useful. Alcatraz is going to high A tier. Now before we jump over to the modern era great buildings, I want to mention that you can fill out your own tier list and share it over on my Discord server if you disagree with me. Simply join via the link in the description, head on over to the video discussion forum, and you'll find the info there. I'm interested to see where you would place some of these buildings. Alright, now back to the modern era. This era brings the Space Needle, which gives happiness and coins and belongs in the low D tier. The Atomium gives guild goods and happiness, but is pretty big too. Personally, I don't like it. It's the worst great building in terms of guild goods per tile, and is more expensive than the Ark and Observatory to level. I like to think of it as only worth it if your guild is burning through guild goods. Many guilds are able to be competitive and don't need the guild goods from the Atomium. However, if you are in that situation where you do need the goods, it's a decent option, just not the best option. Therefore, I think the Atomium can sit comfortably in the B tier. In the postmodern era, we're given the Cape Canaveral, a 4x5 building that gives forge points. It's the second most efficient great building for return on your investment with forge points, is relatively small, and is not that great of a choice. The cape provides only forge points. Nothing else. 
When you compare it to modern event buildings, it's just not worth it anymore to build and level. Take the Thundering Laboratory of Monsters from the 2023 Halloween event. The lab provides up to 27 forge points in the same space as the cape. However, it also provides tons of attack, goods, guild goods, and fragments. Those attack boosts would probably more than make up for the fewer forge points from the lab, and I'll be removing my own cape soon to replace it with a lab of monsters. The cape can go to high C tier then. It's not terrible, but I won't be recommending it to anyone. The other postmodern great building is the Habitat, an easily forgettable great building providing population and coins. It's not worth the forge points, so we're putting it in D tier. The contemporary era gives us one of the most visually striking great buildings, the Lotus Temple. It's a shame that the temple only gives happiness and coins, and that this beautiful design is crammed into our rather crowded D tier. There will be even more great buildings in the D tier before we're done. The other contemporary great building is the Innovation Tower, which gives population and forge points. In my opinion, it's not worth building. It is the most efficient great building for population, but it's rare to see a player needing that population outside of guild versus guild players, and well, that's irrelevant now. If you need population and for some reason can't get event buildings that provide enough, it's a worthy choice, but otherwise is something that you should avoid. C tier. The Tomorrow Era has some of the most unique looking great buildings in the game. The Truce Tower is 6x5, animated, and will provide supplies and aid goods. You get one good from the age of the building you aided, limited to a certain number of goods per collection of the Truce Tower. Some players swear by the tower for trading down goods, but goods are given a plenty from event buildings now, so I don't think it's even worth buying goods to trade down with forge points. Regardless, the Truce Tower is going to the D tier. It's the first great building I ever got to level 10, so for sentimentality, I've got to give it the highest place in the D tier. The other great building from the Tomorrow Era is the Voyager V1, a 4x7 waste of space providing supplies and plunder goods. It's like the Truce Tower, but even worse since it requires you to actually successfully plunder a building. D tier. The future brings some fresh new great buildings. The Ark is 7x5, provides guild goods and a contribution reward on other players' great buildings. It's not best in class for guild goods, but it's not a bad option either. The contribution reward is okay, but most players don't really need more medals and blueprints anyways. As such, I'm putting the Ark into the B tier. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. The Ark is probably the single most powerful building in the game, and enables us to level all of our other great buildings faster and more efficiently. I'm happy to move it to be the first great building in the S tier. It's incredibly useful. The Rainforest Project, the other great building from the future, is not useful. It provides unrefined goods and an increase to the chance that you get a blueprint from aiding other players. However, you can just generate blueprints from the Ark instead, so this boost is meaningless. It does look nice though. D tier. Moving on to the Arctic future, first up is the Gia statue. It gives you the amazing bonuses of medals and happiness, basically a more expensive Colosseum. D tier. I'll put it above the Colosseum though, as it does look really nice and is smaller than the Colosseum. The Arctic future also has the Arctic orangery. This great building gives forge points, but more importantly, also gives your units a chance to do a critical hit, dealing 1.5 times the damage that they normally would. The only drawback is that this chance only applies when units are attacking units of the same age. If you are using higher age units, don't bother with the orangery. However, if you are fighting units of the same age, it's a must build. As such, I'm giving the Arctic orangery the prestigious rank of S tier. One of the big reasons for this ranking is that the orangery is future proof. While other attack great buildings may eventually be power crept by event buildings, this great building amplifies whatever attack boosts you may have, whether those are from great buildings or event buildings. The third great building of the Arctic future is one that many players have been ignoring for far too long. Meet the Seed Vault, a 5x6 great building that I would take over the Chateau Frontenac any day. The Seed Vault gives you supplies and a chance to get rewards from aiding other players. That doesn't sound like a big deal until you realize that those rewards include goods and diamonds. While the Chateau provides more goods, you can reliably produce hundreds of goods per day from the Seed Vault too. As per those diamonds, well, with a max friends list neighborhood and guild, you can aid close to 300 people per day. The chance for diamonds is low, but get the Seed Vault to level 100 and you're looking at averaging over 8700 diamonds per year. The most powerful part is that the Seed Vault is extremely low maintenance. 
Unlike the chateau where you need to be looping recurring quests every day, all you need to do for the seed vault is hit the 8 all button three times a day and collect the bountiful rewards. A level 100 seed vault provides more diamonds per year than two worlds where you complete guild expeditions weekly. In short, it's a must build for any player, even if you spend money in the game. 8700 diamonds per year per world with a level 100 seed vault is nothing to scoff at. Assuming no diamond deal offers, that's the equivalent of a free $60 or so worth of diamonds. I can't stress how good of an investment this great building is. Or maybe I can. The Sea Vault gets S tier. Swimming over to the oceanic future, the Atlantis Museum is 6x7 and can double plunder rewards and will produce unrefined goods. However, do you really plunder anymore? I'm sure some people can find a use for the Atlantis Museum, but I would rather aid those people with the Sea Vault than hope I get lucky and can snag a good plunder. I'll give it high D tier. It's just not worth the space. The Kraken, the next great building from the oceanic future, is 5x5, has a really cool animation, and gives forge points and a chance to kill one of the enemy units at the start of a battle in a limited number of fights per collection. This great building is okay if you collect it when you're at high attrition, but it can often just be an unnecessary boost and feel very hit or miss. Even when it does hit, it's not as good as I'd like it to be. Not to mention, to delay collecting it in order to have charges for when you're at high attrition is a pain and can get really annoying if you use collect all. I'm giving it C tier. The third great building from the oceanic future is a different story. The Blue Galaxy is 7x5 and will give you medals and a chance to double the collections of a limited number of buildings in your city per collection. This doubling bonus makes the Blue Galaxy extremely powerful. It can double long chain sets providing tons of forge points, it can double fragments from gold league buildings or just the normal event buildings, and can even double diamonds from wishing wells. I highly recommend this building to boost your collections especially if you've got buildings that provide many forge points. In fact, if you're doubling buildings that produce at least 15 forge points per day, the Blue Galaxy is the cheapest great building by return on investment. Automatic S tier. Not to mention the power of the Blue Galaxy only increases the more powerful event buildings we get since it only amplifies their rewards. Next up is the Virtual Future, bringing us the Terracotta Army. This 4x6 building is like a combo Cathedral of Aachen and St. Basil's Cathedral, giving both attack boosts and defense boosts. However, this comes at a price. The Terracotta Army is much more expensive than the Great Buildings focusing explicitly on attack or defense. With attack and defense both being needed now for features such as the Gil Expeditions, I like the Terracotta Army. I just wish that it was a little bit more efficient. I'm going to give it low B tier as I think it is still useful, but that it shouldn't be your first choice for attack boost Great Buildings. The second great building from the virtual future is the Himeji Castle, and this one is debated on its usefulness. It's not more efficient than event buildings for forge points, doesn't provide a sizable number of goods daily, and is worse than a wishing well for diamonds, even at very high levels. This great building is one of the most overhyped great buildings in the game, but when you do the math, it's just not as good as it sounds. C tier. If we board our rockets and blast off to space age Mars, we discover the Virgo Project. This 5x5 great building provides coins and a chance to kill half the enemy army at the start of a battle, for a limited number of fights per collection. Basically, this is an even more limited Kraken. C tier. The other Mars great building is the Stargazer. It's 5x5 and provides previous age goods. It is the only great building that directly provides previous age goods, but caps out at 150 goods per day or about 5.5 goods per tile. If you need previous age goods that badly, I prefer some of the event buildings we've been getting where they provide both previous age goods as well as attack boosts, forge points, or other rewards. I'll give the Stargazer C tier. In Space Age Asteroid Belt, we only got one great building, the Space Carrier. This 7x4 building is like the negotiations version of the Himeji Castle, and also provides special goods. It's useful to level this quickly if you're trying to move through the Arctic or Oceanic futures faster. Other than that, it's not particularly noteworthy except for the fact that it will rarely pay out a Diplomatic Gift Selection Kit, which lets you choose Wishing Wells or a Wishing Well Shrink Kit. It's the only great building that can give a Wishing Well Shrink Kit, which, when combined with the special goods, saves this great building from the C tier. Instead, it's going in situational because I'd recommend it for diamond farms or players trying to age up quickly. Space Age Venus gives us the Flying Island, an absolutely beautiful great building. 
It gives you a chance to collect a shard every four hours in the cultural settlements that can give you rewards like goods or forge points. Unfortunately, the Flying Island is just about the worst great building for either of those boosts, save for the Temple of Relics. Just don't build this one. I know it looks pretty, but that's about all it does for you. D tier. Moving on to Space Age Jupiter Moon, we find the AI Core. This dynamic great building with a great animation is 5x5 five five and provides guild goods, as well as a boost to any special goods you collect from the Arctic Harbor, Oceanic Terminal, and Synthesizers. I don't find the secondary boost to be that compelling. It speeds up your progress through those ages, yes, but to me that's not worth the investment. Once you reach the space ages, you're better off just staying in the age, building up all the special goods you need, and moving on. The compelling part of the AI core is its guild goods, but it is one of the most expensive options for that. I guess we'll give it B tier, but to me the AI core is one that you could never build and still be happy with. You might notice that there are only three great buildings left. The Space Age Titan great buildings are all something extremely unique. They require Space Age Titan goods to level it past level 10, and they are extremely expensive as a result. They are also extremely powerful with attack and defense boosts, forge points, guild goods, and previous age goods. If you can get the goods to level these great buildings cheaply, they're awesome. But if you can't get the goods at a decent rate, you're going to be spending a lot of forge points to level these. We'll have to see what the goods market for Space Age Titan goods looks like once the next age comes out, as a sudden decrease in Space Age Titan players could make goods prices increase rapidly. I'm going to put these in their own special tier, the SATGB tier, Space Age Titan Great Buildings. I don't think they're S as they're pretty expensive, but they don't feel right for A tier either. We'll have to reevaluate these after the next age comes out. And so there we have it, the final list with the Ark, Seed Vault, Blue Galaxy, and Arctic Orangery in the S tier, the Alcatraz, Zeus, Castel del Monte, Cathedral of Aachen, and Observatory in A, the AI Core, Atomium, and Terracotta Army in B, the Himeji Castle, Kraken, Cape Canaveral, Stargazer, Virgo Project, Innovation Tower, and Galata Tower are in C. Then we have the Chateau Frontenac, Temple of Relics, and Space Carrier in Situational. Build them if you can benefit from them, otherwise I'd avoid them. The Space Age Titan Great Buildings make up their own special ranking, congrats to them. And finally, the rest of the Great Buildings are in the D tier. These are the ones you shouldn't bother placing. Do you agree with my choices, or would you rank some buildings differently? Let me know in the comments, or over on my Discord server, linked in the description. Hope you enjoyed this really long video, and as always, I'll see you all next time.